Alright, so this is my third time recording this tutorial, but I'm going to try to show you very quickly here how to make this radar material, which you can see right back here uh, in the material editor. So it, I'm just going to show you like the math operations on how to actually make this and how to put it together real quick. Alright, so the first thing we're going to need is our radio gradient, which you can make for yourself in GIMP actually really easily here. Uh, just go to gradient and then select radial. I'm sure there's some extremely easy way to do it probably in Photoshop also but uh, okay so now what we want to do with our our gradient is multiply it by some value that's greater than one. And I'll show you why in a minute here. And then take it by a power And we'll make the power 10 or so. And we'll clamp it down. Constant clamp, so it's going to stay between 0 and 1 no matter what we do. And then we're going to plug it into diffuse to see what it looks like. Okay. So now, well, oh, uh, you can see kind of this discoloration. That's because, remember, we could, okay, with white, the, the values are red is going to be 1, green is going to be 1 and blue is going to be 1. So any of these we can plug in and it's actually going to fix our problem here because it's only going to focus on one color. All right. Uh, which, remember, is still going to just show up as a color value anyway, so it's going to be 1 and it's going to be fine. Okay. So the reason that we took this to a power, and uh, like I say, this isn't the first time I've done this, so it's getting kind of annoying, but uh, here is our calculator. All right. If we take 2 to the power of 5, it's going to be 32. If we take 5 to the power of 5, it's going to be this bigger number. And if we take 10 to the power of 5, it's going to be an even bigger number. And it's going to increase exponentially. So it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And, it's, and each step is going to get bigger than the last step, right? If we take a decimal to that same power, it's going to get smaller and smaller, right? So basically what we're doing is increasing the contrast and making it so that there's less of a gradual slope and more of just a straight drop off, right? And it doesn't make much sense right now, but the reason we're doing that is because we want to subtract it um, from another one, right? Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, oop, I always do that. Okay, subtract. If we subtract something from itself, it's going to be zero, right? But what we want to do instead here is say, subtract it from a smaller version of itself so that it leaves a ring in the middle. So let's make that 5. Um, and you'll see why I'm doing this extra step in a minute as far as uh, the multiply, because we could have just saved ourselves a step um, by changing that value, but I'll, I'll do this instead here. We'll change this to 0 0.7. And you can see what what we're doing right now is actually saying, okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and take this value minus the slightly smaller version of the same thing, right? So instead we get this value in the middle, or like, uh, or what I mean is that we get the first value. We only keep the outer edge though because we're subtracting the smaller one from the middle. Okay, so now. I'm going to add something else in here so that you can see. Remember how we changed the size of the of the of the ring by changing that outer number there? This will make sense in a minute. Okay, so we changed the ring size by changing this multiple. So oh, so what I'm going to do is actually multiply these both by the same value so that we can change the size of the ring based on this value, right? So the thing is though, we don't want to have to change that manually for every second. We want a graph to do it for us. So let's take a look here. Graph of a function. And this is just going to be various graphs um, based on various equations. So we want something that's going to go and repeat itself, but we don't want it. Um, we don't want it to go up and down. We just want it to go 
up and then drop down, right? But let's go ahead and see what we can do with the sine curve. And we'll have it be driven by time. Oop. So it's kind of like this. Like, time is going to be... I'll go find an actual sine curve for you. Time is going to be this x value. And then what we get out is going to be this y value, right? So it's going to go from 1 down to negative 1. And it's going to be that nice big curve, right? Now, we don't want it to work quite like that. And I'll show you why in a minute here. That's not exactly how you want your radar to be working. Um, so we it needs some more work. Now, if you go and look at the sign of tangent, though, that's that's a bit nicer to us because it's going to go up and then it's going to drop back down, right? So the thing is, tangent is sine divided by cosine. Oops. Cosine. So let's divide these here. And then this isn't going to work at first, and I'll show you why. Oh, well, of course I need to plug time into cosine. All right, so you see it got really messed up there. Now, the reason is because we need to clamp it down all over again. Oop. Clamp. Aha, clamp. <laughs> all right. So you see, that's that's going to do that, and uh, it's going to get bigger, then it's going to drop back down to zero, and then start all over again. Now, I don't want it to go so fast, though, so I'll change the period of these graphs. Right, changing the period is going to change how long it takes to get from uh, one complete cycle to the next. Right, so changing it to a larger period is going to make it take, a, uh, take longer. In this case, I changed it to five, so it's going to move one-fifth the speed, so it's going to take five times as long. All right. Now, if you take a look at the uh, at the actual tangent curve, though, you can see it gets exponentially um, a higher slope as you go up, right? And I want more of that straight line look rather than this curve, though. So I'm actually going to go ahead and say subtract. And I'm going to go ahead and subtract 1. It would have been fine like this, but I'd rather subtract 1. And I'll show you on the graph again in just a second here. All right, and watch the difference here. So it's not quite linear, but it's more of a linear um, ascension here, right? So it's going to be like, if you can see that there, it's just going to be this part from 1 to 2 now instead of the part from 0 to 1. So you can see just the difference in the way that the graph is shaped. All right. And that is our entire radar ping slash ring here. Um, and I'll go ahead and add some comments here just to make it a little bit easier. Well, I guess more visually easier rather than actually anything being easier. But And then uh, there's a graph. All right. Perfect. Okay. Now the thing is, uh, that's not actually doing a whole lot. It's just It's just a simple ring. So what we want to do, actually, is say we want... Okay, well, first of all, actually, let's go ahead and add some extra stuff here. Let's go ahead and add this radar look here. All right, and we're going to say we want a linear interpolation node, and I'll show you what this does in just a second. We'll plug this in as alpha. And remember, you can just plug in that, that red part again, and it's going to work just as well. And we're going to make the bottom one a value of 1, so just pure white. We're going to make this the other value. All right, and plug that in. All right, so what it's going to do here is say anywhere that is black, anywhere that the value is 0, it's going to go down, or it's going to go to A, I'm sorry. It's going to go to A, so you're going to see the, the big ring. Um, but then as you get closer to 1 for the white, it's going to go to this instead. So it's basically just a really simple way of, of uh, 
adding them together without necessarily having to actually add anything. Now I'm noticing a, a problem that I made here uh, earlier. This clamp shouldn't just be one because you can see it gets cut off too early. So let's try two and see where that leaves us. Oh, it gets a little bit bigger, but not big enough. So let's say five. Uh, it's still not big enough. Let's just try a really big number and see what happens. All right, and that works fine. Putting that at fifty. See if you look at the sine curve again, it reaches an asymptote, which basically means it goes on to infinity with ever without ever actually hitting that dotted line. All right. So now that's our ring. Now there's still a few other things I want to add here. All right. So let's go ahead and add. Let's see what I want to add first. Let's add the sweep first here. So it doesn't look like much, but if you take a look at the texture, it's actually got alpha, so you can see like um, where it's see-through and such. And we want it to rotate, so we'll add a rotator. Oop. And you can change how fast it rotates and things like that, but uh, you can change how fast and which direction. Let's say negative 0.5 just because it looks more fun or something, you know. Uh, okay, so we'll go ahead and add both of these again. So you can see now we have the ring plus the sweeper. And we'll go ahead and clamp it just uh, mainly as just a precaution. You don't want it to cause trouble later because, remember, it's still the one adding on top of the one. Oh, and I see... Remember I just talked about how this has alpha and then I promptly forgot to add the alpha instead? That's the difference there. You can actually see the see-through part. Okay, so it's clamped. And uh, the other thing I want to do here is add a new linear interpolation node. Because I actually want... I want all of this stuff to be green, remember? Because um, this is a radar after all. Uh, so let's add two constant three vectors to be our two colors. All right, now where it's where it's black there, we want that to be uh, pure. Or okay, where it's I'm sorry, where it's black, we want it to be dark green. Where it's white, we want it to be like a, a brighter green. So look at that. Okay, so now we'll add that there instead. Okay, now we have color. Now the problem is the color goes too far outside the rings and it's not supposed to do that. So that's why I have a whole other texture here. Just to take care of that. Remember the white multiplied by anything because that's uh, a value of 1 is going to be 1. And then the black multiplied by anything is going to be 0 because black is 0. So all that it's going to do basically is clip off the outside stuff. And there you go. So that is our radar material. And um, obviously, like I said, this is just kind of um, kind of to show you some math operations. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of heavy, heavy duty in the math, actually. Here's our sine curve and or our uh, tangent curve and everything. But uh, there you go. And um, like I say, here's what it looks like. A big block, <laughs> and uh, yeah, there you go. Oh, one other thing, real quick. Uh, you wouldn't want to add it just to a static mesh like this in the actual game. There's really no reason you'd ever want it to be like that. What you'd actually want to do is plan out your material very carefully, so that you can, because the gradient. Remember, the gradient is still just. Oop, wrong one there. The gradient is is uh, just this multiplied by the curves and by, you know, other things along inside the curve and everything. So that can be anywhere on your on your material and that'll be just fine. It could have been over in a corner or something. So it's just, it all just comes out to how you lay out your mesh and the smart layout and everything. I, I don't like that rotator. I'm going to actually switch it back to 0 0.25 where it was originally. And uh, there's a lot of little things you can change in this pretty easily here. You can change how long the uh, how long it takes to get from one side to the other. So it's going to stretch out the period, so it's going to be a slower slower curve. You could always 
subtract that also so that it's gonna you, you can really see there this is why I, I subtracted that one because it's not a linear curve so you can see how that that affects it kind of negatively actually there so let's go ahead and subtract that one again so like I say it's not gonna be a perfectly linear curve but it's gonna be more linear at least all right and then you could change the the size of those also by like changing some of these powers and changing some of these uh, multiples and everything. So I think if I multiply that by 0 0.5, let's we'll see what happens here. I think it should make it a thicker curve, or a thicker ring, yeah. Um, or 0 0.2, that would be pretty crazy actually, so let's see what that looks like. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> but, um, so there you go. You could You could change any of these values actually pretty easily. And, um, yeah, like I say, just there you go. Congratulations if you actually stuck around for 15 minutes and watched this whole thing. So...